Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, Darius Onchowskis. Today is the 5th of May 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, when or Wednesday, sorry, Tuesday's Tuesday's afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JFD Bank uh, website, and specifically our JFD Research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the Research tab right there on the top, um, and it'll take you to this page, which we as always also update on a daily basis. Yep, as I said. Um, um, which I believe you can find some use, uh, which you, I believe you can find useful. So that's simple as that. Um, so yep, feel free to, like I said, to check us out here on jfdbank.com. So um, jumping into this chart, this graph, this table, this map, um, just a quick update on what's happening here globally. So this was the figure from this morning. Um, so of course, obviously it has grown. The number has reached, uh, well, it has grown. Um, but let's see if it actually managed to overcome the 3,600,000 3, uh, level. So, yes, just just slightly. Um, so, of course, un that's the, unfortunately, uh, but uh, at the, for now, that's going to be the tendency for a while. So, um, as I hope this tendency will uh, start, sl well, it is already slowing down. Uh, so, let's hope it, it starts decreasing or at least it stops uh, at this level here. So, um, of course, the total amount of deaths also continues to rise, but the probably the uh, if looking at this leaderboard, uh, we can see that UK is getting close to Italy. So, uh, it will be quite interesting to see if actually. Um, UK can overcome Italy by amount of de deaths uh, while being below on the total amount of confirmed. So this is going to be uh, this is going to be quite interesting to see, to be honest. Um, but um, yeah, that's the situation for now, guys. So I hope you're all staying safe. Um, and uh, yep, let's continue monitoring the situation. Now then, uh, jumping into um, a few in, a few instruments here. So the first one I want to touch on here is the German DAX. Uh, this morning I talked about this one. Again, this is going to be just a quick o uh, overview because again, the same idea remains valid. We need to see a clear break through one of these highlighted areas before considering a further directional move. So for now, we're stuck here in between these two levels, the 10,280 zone on the downside and the 10,820 territory on the upside. So as long as the uh, the price is going to stay uh, inside this kind of little range, um, we will remain somewhat neutral. If it starts pushing above this uh, 10,820 zone, uh, that's the high of the 14th of April. Um, and if we get a nice push above this, we will start considering higher levels because still for us to get a little bit more comfortable uh, with the higher levels, we would need to see a push above this barrier here, the highest point of April, uh, which is around the 11,235, 36 zone. Um, but uh, like I said, we will start considering higher levels if we get a push above this level here, the 10,820 zone. Now, previously, uh, for example, yesterday I was talking about this um, this index as well, and what I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this 21-day EMA because, as you can see, for now it's acting as a very nice area of support. So what I was saying on, on Monday that, in a way, if it drifts lower but still 
continues to move slightly above this 21 day EMA, then we could see another push higher. Um, something similar as we had here in um, in the beginning in the beginning, oh sorry, in the beginning, around mid mid April. So keep your eyes on this one. Very interesting developments here. Uh, let's see if the bulls can push this one higher. However, for now, uh, yep, like I said, we will uh, stay careful and cautious. Um, and uh, for now, we'll keep an eye on these two levels. Now then, uh, the NASDAQ 100. Now, uh, looking at this picture, um, we can see that the NASDAQ yesterday managed to climb back up here, managed to gain a little bit, not much, but still enough. Um, and it, it pushed higher. Um, however, it stayed below this upside support line taken from the low the 23rd of March. Um, we will continue monitoring that because um, it's very interesting um, to see if, if the uh, if the price can actually get back above it. So, um, but looking at the cash index right now, we can see that the price is traveling uh, is currently balancing at around 8,919 levels. So basically, we are back above this 8,880 territory, which I spoke about previously. That was the uh, the high of the 17th of April. Um, and as you, as we can see now, the price is back above it. So basically, it's back. Uh, it could it's just somewhere balancing around this upside line so what what's probably going to happen is that this upside line is going to be a little bit in the way so most likely we will get rid of it and now focus mainly on some key support and resistance levels so the fact that we are currently already tra uh, on the cash index, we are trading above this barrier 8,880 zone. So that's a good sign. However, to get a little bit more uh, comfortable with higher levels, we would prefer to see a, a push above the high of April, uh, which is roughly around that psychological 9,000 zone. So so for now, guys, uh, what we're going to do is just we're going to monitor this uh, 9, 000, psychological 9,000 territory. And then aim for if we get a break above this, then yes, we will aim for higher levels because this would confirm a fourth coming higher high. And yep, more buyers could be joining in. The the big question, of course, um, it would be quite interesting to see if actually we could travel all the way higher here and reach the all time high because at the moment everything is kind of shaping up towards that. Now, don't get me wrong, um, maybe I'm just getting ahead of myself a little bit, but um, for now, I mean, you can see that after we had the slide, from, which was from the end of February and, and up until the mid-March, we have managed to recover already a decent, uh, a, a decent amount of losses. And let me just, if I put the Fibonacci retracement here, uh, we can see that we have managed to recover already um, at least, well, we've at least 61.8% uh, on the Fibonacci. We've managed to re recover, and uh, now it seems that it's heading towards that 78.6%. Um, and after that, well, it would be quite interesting to see if that gets easily over overcome, then, well, uh, it would be quite interesting to see if we can actually reach the previous all time high. And then, of course, the big question will be if we could see this one as a double top pattern overall but again too early to talk about that yet uh something some food food for thought for you uh for the future but again let's go step by step first let's see how it pr pr plays around near the psychological 9000 territory if we get a nice pop above this then yes we will aim for higher levels if if it struggles to overcome this then yep we'll be very careful here um in terms of the downside we would like to see a drop below this 61.8 percent re retracement on the fibonacci which is roughly around the uh, 8600 level and then we could uh, aim for lower levels for now uh like i said the cash index is pushing higher again so let's see if it can travel further north gold quick update here and uh, not much has happened to be honest um it continues to trade uh, within this little range that i talked about on monday um and uh, this little range is roughly between the uh, 1680 territory and the 1647 zone so roughly around there basically um we what i was talking about uh, yesterday was that if we get a nice strong push above the uh, 170304 zone which is the high of near the high of the 9th of march or in the words near the highest point of march um if we would get a nice push above this then yes uh, further acceleration to the upside could be possible however as you can see yesterday's uh, daily candle yes pushed higher but 
failed to close above this this morning uh, today uh, we also had another push higher but again failing to remain above this highest point of March so this is going to be very interesting to see if it actually can can stay here if it, if we can then yes we will aim for some higher levels within the range I need to specify this we need to, we'll aim for higher levels within the range and uh, then we'll take it from there uh, for now it's struggling with the with this 170304 territory um, but we can't even really talk about the downside yet because in order to aim for for lower levels we would like to see a drop a nice good drop below the 1680 territory and preferably a daily close below that area as well could do uh, could do the trick here for more sellers and we could see uh, gold sliding all the way here at least towards the upside support line taken from the low of the 21st of May uh, 2019 of course um, now this line is a bit of a tentative one don't get me wrong but uh, yep around here we also have the 1611 territory uh, which is quite interesting as well so we'll keep that in mind but again for now guys we're keeping close eye on the 1680 on the downside and the 1704 on the upside. We need to see a close, a daily candle closing outside of these two two levels. Um, Litecoin. So um, haven't looked at this one for quite a while, and uh, basically uh, it's the the kind of, it's not really performing well as its counterparts like the, the like Ethereum or Ripple. Um, this one's a little bit. Uh, you can see that it has a bit. It seems that it has a little bit less volume, trading volume in it, in it. Um, and uh, we can see that now it's drifting lower today a little bit. However, it still remains above this 21-day EMA here on the daily chart. So yesterday we had a drop, but the price remained above this 21-day EMA. So this 21-day EMA here um, continues to act as a good area of support um, so we're, we will of course keep an eye on this one if it, that's the kind of last resort I would say for the bulls um, there was a, an upside line that I've drawn here but to be honest all of them are a little bit kind of maybe tentative I would say well this one's still kind of better um, but still I would probably say uh, don't really focus on it too much. Mainly focus on some some sort um, some uh, uh, support and resistance levels. So basically, yes, if we do get a break of this upside line, this would basically put place the uh, the the price below the 21-day EMA. And yep, maybe more sellers could see this as a good opportunity to step in. However, uh, also something to to bear in mind is this low, the low, the 27th of April, which is roughly around the 43.15 territory. Just for that extra. Uh, kind of confirmation a nice good clo daily close below this level could also do the trick for more sellers and we could then start aiming for levels like the 37.94 zone which is the low of the 16th of April um, or we could go even further south again that's in only in the scenario if we first of all get a break of this upside line drop below the 21 day EMA and uh, close have a daily close below the uh, 43.15 territory and then yes we will aim for lower levels for I mean for now uh, as long as the price remains here above this upside line above the 21 day EMA then yes we could in a way examine the upside however we in order to be honest we'll take a very careful uh, conservative approach here and wait for a push above the highest point of April which is roughly around the 50.74 territory um, and if we do get a nice push above this then yes this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and and uh, what we'll, we'll aim then for will be the 200 EMA here on the daily chart. So we're not going to drag this one too much to the upside. We're just going to target this level first, this area near the 200 day EMA. Uh, but for that, we need to see a nice, good, strong move above the 50.74 territory. Um, Jumping into a few pairs now, AUDCH Chef. Now this is a bit of a, a tricky one. So as you can see, I had this downside line here previously drawn, the the, the ones taken from the high of the 1st of January. Um, it violated the this down this downside line. It pushed above this barrier, the 0 0.6347 territory, and uh, kind of uh, it seemed that this could continue moving higher. However, uh, as you can see, it drifted back down, back below the uh, below this downside line and also fell below this one of its key um, support levels which which I've looked at uh, last time and uh, it drifted lower and 
found support near the 21 day EMA. So this is where probably the this the, a very good example how the this 21 day EMA is kind of working out nicely. So uh, what we're going to do here right now is how we could play this one out. Again, I will look at this one from the short term perspective because um, to be honest, uh, it's it kind of really violated everything, every single level and uh, it's just started moving sideways. So first of all, let's get rid of this downside line, no longer valid. Um, we could try to draw a an upside support line here, but to be honest, um, all of them are going to be very tentative and uh, you could try to draw it this way or maybe you can capture this little low and uh, connect these lows basically right here and you can see that for example the the uh, the pair is now testing the uh, the this upside line from underneath but again this line is very tentative so that's why we're not going to focus on, on this too much what we're going to do here is we're going to grab this high the the highest point of april which is around the 0 0.6402 territory and uh, we'll wait for a push above this in order to aim for higher levels because this way the the pair would confirm a forthcoming higher high and more buyers could be joining in. Uh, with the downside, previously I had this level, but given that it got violated and uh, the uh, the pair yesterday formed a new low here for the week, uh, for now this is the lowest point of this week, the 0 0.6135 zone. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this one because if it drops below this, then yes, a new low for this week could be uh, formed and then we'll take it from there. Then we'll start aiming for these lower levels, uh, but again, we'll be very careful and cautious because with this pair, it's quite tricky. You do have a commodity linked currency and the and the safe haven uh, Swiss franc. So basically um, it's a good example of uh, risk on risk off um, in a kind of environment and uh, in, in the market. Um, so yeah, for now we can see that the AUD, AUD, US, AUD CH, CHF is pushing a little bit to the upside. Uh, markets are uh, moving higher. And as I've mentioned previously, when I was talking about the um, the, the DAX and the NASDAQ, uh, the cash index, the ca NASDAQ 100 cash index, um, th those are pushing a little bit to the upside. You can see this, this move here higher as well. Um, but again, we will be very very careful and uh, for now from the very short term perspective uh, we'll monitor these two levels because again we, what we don't want to see is a range and uh, range here where the pair is just going to start moving sideways within between these two levels and uh, well we could be stuck here for for quite a while so that's why Let's wait for a break through one of these levels and then we'll take it from there. Uh, USDCHF, so also pushing a little bit nicely to the upside. Um, however, it's finding its resistance near the uh, 100 EMA here um, and also near this level, near the 0 0.9713 mark, uh, 13 level, which is the marked by the low of lows of. Uh, near the lows of the 27th of April, 28th and 29th of April as well. So, um, and like I said, it coincides with the 100. 100 EMA here on the daily chart. So basically for now the pair is stuck here and getting a nice hold up. However, what I talked about previously when I was covering this pair is that uh, everybody should kind of keep in mind that we are still within the range uh, roughly between the 0 0.9588 territory on the downside and the 0 0.9797 level on the upside. So in other words, um, if you're looking for something, uh, let's say maybe if you're looking for some sort of a directional move, you need to wait for a break uh, through one of these highlighted areas and then aim for, uh, for the next move. Yep. Uh, but again, for now, we're stuck here from the very short-term perspective, yes, the pair seems to be willing to travel towards the upper upper bound of the range here. However, uh, we'll remain very careful and cautious. Um, and uh, for now, we'll probably stay neutral here. I do understand it's quite a big territory uh, to be missing out, but... Um, Overall, if you can see here, I mean, we're stuck. We're stuck, um, and it could be quite tricky because, for example, if it now finds resistance here, where well, it, it is finding resistance right now here. But if it continues to get a hold up here, and we may see a bit of a, re a, re a rejection and uh, push lower again. So that's why let's. Let's be on the safe side and let's wait for a clear breakthrough one of these levels. Uh, GBP CAD now also something to keep in mind. We are that we are also within a range. Basically, we are ranging a lot across the board, across different instruments. 
and uh, for now, roughly, we are stuck here between the roughly between the 1.7245 tone uh, level on the downside and the 1.70, level on the upside. So um, again, similar story. We need to wait for a clear break through one of these um, highlighted areas before considering a further directional move. Um, and uh, if we get a breakthrough one of these levels, then yes, we will aim for uh, the next move either to the downside or to the upside. Um, the only kind of positive aspect here is the fact that we are uh, looking at this daily chart that we are still above the 21 day EMA here. So in a way, what we could see here is the pair kind of curving up again and pushing higher if if this 21 day EMA continues to provide decent support. So something like this could happen. So again, keep your eyes on this one could be quite interesting because like I said, if it find if it continues to balance above this 21 day EMA, uh, a nice reversal could happen here and a push higher, we could see a push higher towards this uh, upper side of the range here near the 1.7692-93 zone but still to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels we would need to see a, put, a break above this barrier and then yep we could aim for higher levels. Um, with, in terms of the downside well, from the short term perspective here, again, uh, if we do get a daily close, maybe a below the 21 day EMA, then yes, maybe we could consider a move lower towards this lower bound of the of the range. However, um, be very careful because we don't want to end up being uh, having something like this here where we're going to drop lower, uh, but then it's going to reverse sharply to the upside, move move back up here, again, close above above the 21-day EMA, and basically it's going to be a huge mess. A lot of people could get stopped out here, and depending on, of course, your, your stop loss. But um, yeah, that's why we would prefer to wait this one out and uh, just can wait until it get closer, get, gets closer to one of these uh, barriers here, either the 1.7693, 293 zone on the upside and the one or the 1.7245 on the downside uh, GPP JPY now this one is interesting I talked about this one uh, this morning and uh, we are very close near this key area of support uh, which is also the lower side of the range where the pair is currently stuck at. Um, so the 1.100, oh sorry, 132.44 zone, uh, that's what we're keeping an eye on right now. If we get a nice daily close below this, then yes, we will aim for further levels, further declines, because as you can see, we keep getting these drops, we keep getting these overshoots, but we don't get a close, a, a nice, decent, good, strong close below this, below this level. So that's what we're looking here for in order to aim for lower levels. For now, we're just we're going to stay neutral, we're just going to continue observing this one and wait for a clear breakthrough one of the highlighted areas. Euro JPY, now this one is a little bit on uh, different uh, because we are having a bit of a uh, weakness in the euro right now. However, uh, however, it as you can see, it drifted lower. A, the pair found almost came close to the lowest point of April, which is around the 115.45 zone. And uh, it's kind of stalled here. So again, don't get me wrong, the day is not finished. We still might see this one drifting further south, maybe even not today, let's say tomorrow. However, uh, we'll be very careful because we are at a very key important area of support. So uh, that's the, first of all, the lowest point of April and also the lowest point of uh, 2020. So something again to consider, something to keep in mind. Uh, if we get a drop below this, then yes, this would confirm a new low for this year and uh, well, further declines are possible. And if we look at the monthly chart, you can see that uh, where it kind of is right now. So basically these levels, last time these levels were tested uh, back in April 2017. So uh, we are, I'm not saying anything, if it if it drops below that uh, lowest point of April of, of this year, then the next potential target here is the lowest point of April of 2017. So uh, it could be quite interesting to see if, it, if we can reach that, but we need that confirmation break first. Um, and uh, for now, for now, yes, overall, we are leaning a little bit more to the downside, but uh, let's stay on the safe side and let's wait for a daily close below this below this territory, below the lo the lowest point of April, uh, which is around the 115.45 zone. If this area 
provides decent support and for example if we do get a drop here below this but we see a daily candle failing to to remain below the territory now this is where it could become very interesting for the buyers again because this pair could be forming a potential double bottom here however um, for such an idea to kind of to work out we would need to see um, a break above this barrier here the 117.77 but I do understand that we could be missing out here on a bit of a move um, so that's why for example if you look at a four hour chart uh, we could try to capture one of these levels here for example uh, we could uh, look at one of like this level for example near the 116.50 zone um, and ice could push back above it could yep increase the chances for uh, for euro JPY to move higher so something to consider guys something to keep in mind and uh, let's see how this is gonna play out but first all eyes are on the lowest point of April which is roughly around and let me just readjust this area there we go that's the lowest point of April near the 115.41 zone so and if I look in the daily chart you can see that yeah that's roughly around there guys so keep your eyes on this one 115.41 let's see if we can get a daily cl close below this if we cannot then maybe the the bulls could get a little bit more happy. Uh, Euro dollar, finally. So here, uh, this morning, we were still hanging above this 21-day EMA, but as you can see, uh, the pair is now drifting lower. It's moving further south. Um, now the big question here is, can first of all, can we reach the 1.0777 level that I keep talking about? Um, if we can, then the big, uh, the other big question will be, can we have a daily close? Because that's the level, uh, and I keep mes mentioning the, this uh, throughout every single my, one of my videos, that this is the level after which we could get a little bit more comfortable with further declines. But we need to see a nice daily close below this. So a nice, good, strong daily close. Because for now, uh, we just get these little teasers, um, and we don't really get that close. So let's wait for that. For now, like I said, we will remain neutral. Um, I do understand that this is a quite a wide range but similarly similarly like with other instruments that we, that I looked at just right now um, also we are in a you know where we were also in a big range we rather be safe than sorry so that's why we will wait for this one to break through one of these highlighted areas either through the 1.0777 on the downside or through this 1.0990 level on the upside so keep your eyes on that one so guys i really hope you found it useful and thank you very much for watching and listening i really appreciate your time guys uh i hope you found it useful and uh if you did then catch my video tomorrow morning my my traders espresso um around six o'clock gmt times so maybe a little bit after that and then we'll we'll have a look at some of these instruments some new ones and we'll take it from there guys so yeah have a wonderful evening guys uh, stay safe um both health wise and market wise and uh yep catch my video tomorrow my traders espresso around six o'clock gmt time and uh yeah have a nice evening Bye bye